Greetings, welcome to my channel, I'm Mr. Sean, and today we are going beyond, beyond the cookbook. So, we're going to have some fun today, um, just like the cookbook. I've never practiced any of the recipes in the cookbook, and I'll bring that over to this segment as well. I'll be doing this first time go, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> so it's going to be interesting. But I have a lot of ideas for this segment, because it's going to deal with Mulgore Spice. I made a bunch of this yesterday after I made uh, my nice little loaf right here. Why well, I'd be on the cookbook. Basically, when I was making this the first time, after I had the first slices and enjoyed it to its fullest, I started thinking, well, what can I do with it? Is this, it's bread, so I thought the easiest thing. Well, bread, French toast, that goes right hand in hand. Also, while I was making this loaf, you see, normally, you make this, if you saw my previous video, you would see it more of an oblong, more of a rustic. But I decided to trim off the edges a bit. Made a, trim off a small edge here and made a dinner roll. You know, just cut it off, reshape it a little bit. Boop. That's different. Now I got a nice little more, more muffin. So you can probably use this for, you know, just a normal dinner roll. You can use, make it take off a little bit more. You could make a uh, Nice little breakfast sandwich for eggs and everything else. Eggs, cheese, bacon, yeah. Or cut off a bit more, reshape it into an oblong, and make a hot dog bun. Do a little bit, do more than that, you know, like, do more than that, like this much. Reshape it, make a, like a hoagie sandwich style bread. So there's, there's a lot of ways you can just use this itself. And be, also be aware, when the book says 25 minutes, this is only 18. For my, this is my oven. So you got, you got to watch your oven times. Make sure you know how your oven works. That's how I had. That's how I ruined the first bread I ever made. <laughs> I didn't pay attention. So you know, regardless of issues, problems I've had in the past, um, I've got some wonderful ideas. Not just how to use the bread as itself, but. What, what also could the spice be used for? Today's segment, we are going to do just you know, come with some easy things. We're going to do some French toast of this. I'm going to throw the spice into some pancake mix. See how good that is. All right, so I take my loaf and cut two slices out of it. And I take two eggs, put it into a small bowl, about a teaspoon of salt, a dash of vanilla, and about a tablespoon of heavy cream, and give it a swirl. I'm going to pour it out onto a plate so I can evenly coat my bread. And now plopping them onto the hot plate. As you see, they've turned a nice little golden brown. Now for the pancakes. I got one egg, a cup of milk, uh, two tablespoons of melted butter, giving all that, that a swirl. Then I put in one cup of flour. That's only a half cup. One teaspoon of mulgur spice. Now pour the liquid ingredients onto the dry ingredients. Ah, I realize it's too thin. I must have forgot the other half cup of flour. Onto the hot plate. Now I'm just waiting for the bubbles to start forming on the pancake, so I can start eventually flipping them over. And there we go, they're looking nice. So here we are. We have our French toast and our Mulgore Spice pancakes. Now, I'm not sure what else to try on these, but other than some Ningo Berries jam, or legal berries jam, some good old maple syrup, and after I shoot, 
after I eat it a little bit, I'll try out some kind of a, I don't know. I want to see how these taste, especially pancakes. Because I know what the bread tastes like, so won't be much of a mystery there. Let's give this a try. Actually, I'll make a little taco with this, so. Spices taste tastes really nice. Perhaps that lingonberry is a little strong, but for this taste, that's the thing I should have chosen a, a less, uh, less potent jam. So I'm gonna try to do this just without anything. <clears throat> Definitely say, this will spice up your pancakes. What? Come on, you know, you know it works. You know it'll work. Alright, so, good old French toast. Mmm, -hmm. does really well. Takes in, you, you know, you have, you have a little spice bread with a little bit of an egg, egg crunch on the top. But definitely with the cream, the vanilla, helps, definitely adds a bit of more flavor and makes it a, a delightful French toast. Those are easy things. Throwing your pancakes, making French toast. I, yeah, I, obviously that's pretty easy, I guess. How about going a little further beyond? Think about it. If, you're, if they're making this bread in World of Warcraft, if you're an adventurer, if you live in those old days, you know, bread lasts only so long, even on a long trip. So, what other ways could they use Mulgore Spice, bread, to make it last even longer? How about Mulgore Spice Heart Attack? Never had Heart Attack before, and it's gonna be interesting to, to say the least. So let's give that a try. See what it looks like, see what it tastes like. So into the sifter, I will be putting through two and three quarters cup of flour, one quarter cup of white sugar, a half teaspoon of baking soda, and about one tablespoon of Mulgore Spice. My little sifter can only handle about one cup of flour at a time, including the other ingredients, so I, so I carefully portioned it out. Then I chopped up some soft butter, threw it into the bowl, and started mixing it around looking to make a sandy texture. Eventually my hands started getting really tired, so I needed to bring in both hands. And that's what I'm supposed to look for. Now I'll pour in one cup of buttermilk, slowly integrating it until it becomes a workable dough. Moving things around, I grab my mat so I can throw out down some flour. Then I pop out the dough. I'll knead it for a few minutes. Then I'll grab my rolling pin to roll it out into a, f a flat dough, about a quarter. You want to roll it out to about one eighth of an inch. Then I use a plastic spatula to square up the dough so I can cut roughly three inch square hard tack. I grabbed a kebab stick and I would push the 
blunt end through the dough to the mat. Then I'll give it a little swirl to make a nice hole in the dough. Then I'll plate them up onto the baking sheet with, with a silicone mat. Pop it in the oven for 10 minutes at 375 degrees. And here they are looking puffed up and actually quite tasty. Also, what else can we make with bread dough, with dough itself? How about some pizza dough? Into a medium sized bowl goes one cup of all purpose flour, one tablespoon sugar, one teaspoon salt, one package of dry yeast, then one pack of Mulgore spice. After mixing around, I'll add three tablespoons of olive oil, then one cup of very warm water. Now they said to use an electric mixer, however, I don't believe they meant this one. After mixing for a little bit, I'm adding the rest of the flour, which is two and a half cups or so. And that's where disaster begins to strike. Right about there. That's the electric mixer they, I, I bet they meant. The electric stand mixer. Anyways, I'm back to the table to plop out the dough, to knead it for a little while. Then, I'm going to ball it up, put some plastic wrap over it, wrap it up, and let it sit for 30 minutes. Here I have the meat that I plan to put on, which will be a meat lovers. I got some lovely bacon, got some meatballs, which I'm slicing up, I got some pork. So I lost some footage. But after the dough had rested and rose, I stretched it out over a pizza pan. I preheated my oven to 375 degrees and partially baked it, the crust for about 10 minutes. Then I have a combination of cheeses of mozzarella, cheddar, and pepper jack. Now here is my dough cooked for 10 minutes or so. So here I am pouring out some homemade pizza sauce. It was a little runnier than I anticipated. It's going to be a great meat lovers. And I'll spread around the cheese. Spread around the meats. Then I'll pop it back into the oven for 10 minutes, which is, or until the cheese has melted. See how that works. So I got a little bit of cheese, got a little bit of the sauce. So 
Go pick out some spell. Great way to spice up your pizza crust. That is awesome. So, you know, pizza just make sure. This is really good. I, I like the pizza though. I definitely need to learn how to make a pizza better. Uh, but it's a very, it's a very nice dough. Let me see, see if I can show you. But you know, it's holding together well, especially for a thick crust. But yeah, you, you can taste the bulgur spices throughout. It's a great dough. Goes well with the sauce and everything else, and mm -hmm. mm. even with a lot of the strong flavors, those meatballs, the pork, definitely there. There's a little bit of spice, more spice in the crust. For granted, people, most people might not know what it is, but they'll, they'll be like, "Wow, this is the best piece of crust ever!" And they'll be like, "Oh yeah!" Thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me on this wonderful adventure. The first. Beyond the Cookbook Series segment. So please come, hope you like this segment. Please let me know down in the comments. Please like as well. Share this with your friends. And I will see you in the next video. But in order to do so, you need to subscribe so you can get notifications when you, when you tap that little bell as well. Thank you. Ciao.